All right, welcome back to the second part of our Mystery of Music presentation tonight. Now, I remember when I was a, a bit of a younger kid, like only like five years ago or six years ago, when um, after I'd left school and stuff like that, we used to go out and we used to party, we used to go to different nightclubs and different things like that. And I remember this one time before we would actually go out, to go night clubbing, or not one time, sorry, every time pretty much. We would all sit down and we wouldn't have too much to do. We'd just be drinking and um, yeah, we'd just put on, my, my friends had Foxtel at the time and we'd put on MTV and we'd begin to watch it. And especially when, when you're drinking and stuff like that, that kind of music really pumps you up and it gets you excited. If the clips are playing something that's really exciting, you get excited. If they're playing something cool, you, you start to feel really cool. And yeah, then we'd go out. And it wasn't until I actually um, kind of left that scene and, and became a uh, Christian and a uh, Seventh-day Adventist once again that I began to wonder just why this music was so powerful and, and especially shows like MTV, why they were so powerful. So far in our presentation, we've looked back a bit on my past and where I came from and why music played such a big role in my life. We've looked at the origins of the um, music industry, or just we touched on it. And now we're going to take a look at the modern day music industry. As we saw in our last presentation, we noticed that the music industry of the old time, you could say, was filled with the occult and black magic and, and all these people that claimed to have sold their soul to the devil in, in basically trade for fame and fortune. But what about the modern day music industry? Do the same things like that happen these days? Or have we become more civilized, let's just say? Well, that's what we're going to have a look at. And you'd be surprised what the answer is. As you can see, here we have a picture of just an average MTV kind of um, scenario. MTV is watched by nearly every single young person of today, you could say. It's a very popular show. It was amazing because PTC actually did a study on it, um, and that's the Parent Television Council. And they found that 73% of boys and 78% of girls between the ages of 12 to 19 actually watch this show. So picture that. 73% of probably your children, your boys, your girls out there, watch this show. Pretty amazing. It must be a powerful show. In this big study that they did, they found, and this was over 171 hours of this programming, they found 1,548 sexual scenes, 3,056 depictions of sex or nudity, 2,881 verbal sexual references, 1,518 uses of unedited and foul language, 1,068 acts of violence, and four times the amount of sexual content than the commercial television stations and shows. So, as you can see, there's a lot of, of stuff that goes on on these shows that you wouldn't want your children to watch. And especially since sometimes we're very strict on, on, the, on the programs on TV our children watch. But do we allow them to watch MTV? Do we think it's just harmless music? Do we allow them to watch shows like video hits and the Australian versions of those things where they play this music? Well, that's, that's a lot of junk that goes into the mind. Here's a very interesting logo that MTV has on one of its commercials. As you can see, they've got an apple there with the core bitten out. And then they've got a little serpent that makes up the T and the V. Could MTV subtly be hi hiding in their shows something? Maybe who they worship? We'll have a look. Bob Pittman said... At MTV, we don't shoot for the 14-year-olds. We own them. So that's a nice statement. Just picture, he's saying that he owns your children. And as you saw from that study, MTV has an incredible amount of power over the youth and influence. So maybe he isn't too far from the truth. Anyway, why don't we have a look 
at some of these artists that are on MTV, and, and not only just on MTV, that span all throughout the modern day music industry. And we'll see what they actually are involved in. Here's a quote from Tori Amos. She says, Music is the most powerful medium in the world. You're hitting places in people. So even these artists acknowledge that music is a powerful thing. And they even use the word medium here. Here we have a quote by Jimi Hendrix. He goes on to say, I can ex explain everything better through music. You hypnotize people. And when you get people at their weakest point, you can preach into their subconscious what we want to say. It's a very interesting quote. It's a very popular quote used by a lot of people, and you may have heard it before. But the question is, what is this message that he's saying that we preach into their subconscious? Could it just be, hey, follow us and, and be cool like us? Or is there something deeper behind this? Here's an interesting quote by um, the Rolling Stone magazine. They said, The main thing is to get the kids. Now you when you're young and brainwash you. Then they've got you for the rest of your life. So these people are perfectly aware of how much power and influence they have over the children. Well, let's take a look at some of these different artists and see just what kind of influence these artists have. Because it may be good and all that MTV has a lot of control, but the focus here is on what kind of music is actually going into your children and into your youth and, and sometimes into, yeah, the adults. Like, everyone's into music these days. So here is one example of a gentleman called Marilyn Manson. Well, um, I don't know if you could call him a gentleman, but, yeah... Marilyn Manson is one of the, you could call him one of the biggest cult rockers of today. And since so many youth are into music like this, it is very vital for us to take a look and just see what people like Marilyn Manson are into, what they believe and what they try to teach through their music. It's very interesting. When Marilyn Manson actually gets up at a concert, do you know what he does? Here is a picture of him tearing up Bibles on the stage. When he gets up there, he tears them up and he blasphemes God. And it's amazing, even on their stages, don't their um, platforms where they're supposed to be doing a rock concert look like a preacher's pulpit? It's just very interesting to know. And, and on that picture back there we saw, on the previous one, we saw a little logo on his little pulpit and it says, Antichrist Superstar. So do people like him have a message to preach? I believe they do. Here we have a quote by Marilyn Manson. He says, I could use black magic to turn the lowly lot life around that was given to me, to attain a position of power that other people would envy and accomplish things that other people couldn't. Now Marilyn Manson has a very interesting story. You see... When he was a child, he, he wasn't much of a, he wasn't a popular kid or anything like that. But one day he heard about a rock star that had made basically a blood pact and, and